Fire in video games is often an underappreciated thing. It's something that some players don't even think about, but sometimes we like diving into the nitty gritty here at Game Ranks, and we wanna talk about games that have some of the most cool, realistic, or creative fire technology and mechanics in video games. We got 10 examples, so let's get started off with number 10 with something impressive, Red Dead Redemption 2. It remains one of the most visually impressive games out there, obviously. All of its special effects look awesome. The water looks great, storms and lightning are super impressive, and of course, the fire is amazing. It's one of those things you really have to stop and appreciate because the game never really draws your attention to it in a way like other games on this list do, but the way fire spreads and builds up is surprisingly detailed and realistically modeled. Here's a great example of that. Like if you dump a guy on the ground next to an open flame, then their limb will slowly catch on fire and slowly spread until they're engulfed in flames. Similar things can happen with other flammable objects like wooden houses. You can't start an entire forest fire in this game, but like for smaller scale infernos, it's very impressive how much granular detail there is to the way it spreads. Of course, like, I mean, like, we're not fire experts here. We don't know for sure how realistic any of this actually is. But from our layman's perspective, the fire in Red Dead Redemption can look pretty incredible at times. Fire look cool. Over at number nine, Battlefield 1. Now, if you're gonna make your game set during the Great War, it only makes sense to make sure your flamethrowers and your flame effects look good. And yeah, this stuff looks really, really good in this game. The flamethrower, as we know it, now gets its first major deployment during World War I, and this game makes great use of it with both handheld flamethrowers and flame tanks, both of which can be absolutely devastating weapons in the right hands. The actual way the flame spreads isn't quite as realistic or as detailed as something like in Red Dead, but it looks just incredibly good. And fire in general plays a huge role in this game. You know, stuff seems to be on fire all over the place. And though it's mostly just for show, it looks really, really good. Dice are well known for their impressive explosion and fire effects, and they're really flexing their effect muscles here. Mechanics wise, there's nothing here that's super realistic or impressive, but visually, it all looks great and really worth pointing out. Next over at number eight, for all the stuff that goes down in the rebooted Tomb Raider series by Crystal Dynamics and Eidos Montreal, it's easy to forget how important fire is, especially in the first and second games. You're setting things on fire and burning things like constantly. There are entire set pieces revolving around fire. The game loves to burn stuff, and on an effects level and a mechanics level, it all feels great. Now, these are hardly simulation games, they're big budget action games, but the way you use fire to solve puzzles is usually pretty inventive and fun here. It starts simple enough, like when you're burning ropes in the first game before blowing up the entire enemy base by using fire arrows on methane gas vents. The second game has an entire underground section filled with like these Greek fire barrels that you can use to solve puzzles. And even in the third game where Lara is a little less of a fire bug, there's still a pretty cool puzzle that has you fill a basin with oil and set it on fire in a visually impressive way. And that's all pretty cool, but there are a lot of great little details with flames in this series as well. Like when you're crawling through a narrow space and the flames actually Actually interact with the ceiling rather than just being a static effect. Little things like that. There's just a ton of uses for fires in the series and they all look great. There's nothing particularly simulation about all of it except for some of those little visual details. You know, you're not starting wildfires here, but the way the developers integrate fire into the puzzles and combat is just fun, if nothing else. Next over at number seven, let's talk Uncharted 3 and The Last of Us together. We're combining them because mechanically they're pretty similar. The chateau fire sequence in Uncharted 3 and the burning restaurant, I guess you can call him a boss, in The Last of Us, uh, both of them have realistically spreading flames that give the section an invisible time limit and they're both incredibly detailed and realistic looking. Now, yeah, they're basically scripted, but few games have fire as realistic as these. The, the way that it spreads and burns the environment around it is absolutely top tier. This is the kind of thing that could only have been done by the detail obsessed crazy people at Naughty Dog working really hard on this stuff. The Chateau sequence came first and is much more spectacular, being a wild escape where you're shooting at enemies and dodging flames and of course jumping all over the place. The restaurant fight in The Last of Us, in comparison, is way more subtle. 
The whole thing starts with just a simple lantern getting knocked over, and the fire slowly begins to fill the whole area. And most players probably don't even notice the fire until like half the restaurant is up in flames, you know, because it really sneaks up on you in an unnerving way. But the way the flames crawl up the ceiling and spread, it still looks incredibly good, even today. Naughty Dog has put some kind of fire in pretty much every game they've made after Uncharted 3, but these two sections, we just really wanted to call them out. They stand out the most. Next over at number six, Divinity Original Sin 2. In comparison to many of the games we've talked about so far, Divinity 2 isn't so much of like a visual showcase, it's more about creating chaotic simulations and forcing players to deal with them. Many elements of the world interact with each other and one of the most dangerous and unpredictable is of course, you guessed it, fire. Now, what makes this game unique compared to other tactical RPGs is just how out of control it can get. Fire can be really dangerous in this game. It all spreads realistically and combined with like the liquid physics of something like a broken tub of oil, you know, you got a recipe for disaster. It's not uncommon for an entire battlefield to be totally engulfed in flames here. And like with your entire party running around a blazing inferno trying to deal with enemies, it could be a total mess. It's tough without some way to remove fires like a, a rain spell, but a big part of the game is finding ways to work around or work with these sudden disasters. Divinity 2 is a game all about combining elements, and fire is one of the most impressive. Now, over at number five, let's talk the 2008 Alone in the Dark game, because we can't have a list like this without mentioning this weird horror game that, you know, published by Atari back when they were still kind of alive. This was a big swing, and it tried to turn Alone in the Dark into like a horror action movie epic with a big soundtrack, huge set pieces, and some impressive fire technology. These days, it's the fire that anyone actually really remembers about this game. You know, let's give this game its due. The fire effects are really impressive. Fire plays a key role in dealing with enemies and solving puzzles in this game, and you can tell that the developers put a lot of time and effort into making the way fire spreads and burns things look actually realistic. Any flammable surface touched by fire will slowly burn and char and eventually collapse in a way that looks really good. Maybe it's the stark lighting or the way the game puts so much focus on it, but these flame effects still look really good, even after all this time. Now the game will mostly be remembered for being pretty mediocre and forgettable, but these flame effects are top notch. You know, we gotta give the credit where it's due. And now at number four, Little Inferno. Does anyone remember this one? It's like a weird little indie game from way back in 2012. The premise is as straightforward as it gets. You got a little furnace and you burn things. That's it. You know, you drop junk in here and then you set it on fire. So basically like the fire simulation is the game here. Stuff burns to a crisp abnormally fast, but otherwise the actual effects are really impressive. Everything burns differently depending on what it is, which is good because that's like the whole point of the game, just seeing the fire effects and just letting stuff burn. It's not particularly puzzling or challenging, it's just a fun, very kind of lizard brain type of thing. You drop things in the furnace and burn them. The simulated fire just looks really good, even for like a basic game. If you wanna see nice looking fire in an easy to digest package, this weird little game is a good place to start. Now down to number three, Far Cry 2. Yes, Far Cry 2. Of course, you know, the, the, the game that added a little chaos to the open world genre, the underrated Far Cry game. Instead of flamethrowers being weak little close range weapons like in most games, in this game, they're like the ultimate tool of death. All you have to do is start a little bushfire and, and watch as the flames spread over an entire enemy camp. It's nuts. The level of simulation here is just wild. It was so powerful that the developers intentionally made flames less powerful in future games. They're still strong, but not nearly as little at the level of Far Cry 2, where like a little spark can create an entire forest fire. It's really strong and it looks great too, you know, burning everything to a crisp. Trees are especially cool looking in this game as the fire spreads to the leaves and then it turns into like this weird, crazy, hellish tree fire. Far Cry 2 could be like a frustrating game in a lot of ways and sometimes starting a fire by mistake could be even more frustrating than anything else, but it was incredibly cool to see these kinds of realistic flames in an open world game and then even just sit around and look at the aftermath, the charred earth. And even though, like we mentioned, the, the flames got a little weaker in the later Far Cry games, there's still some pretty iconic moments that deal with fire. Like that awesome mission where you burn Voss's weed farms in Far Cry 3. But nothing else in the series has been able to really top this stuff from Far Cry 2. 
Down at number two, Noita. This little roguelike doesn't look very impressive at first, but it's hiding a pretty amazing simulation of elements inside its pixel art visuals. What makes this game so wild is that like every pixel is physically simulated. So it's basically like Divinity 2 that we mentioned before on steroids. The ground can break, water will flow, and fire spreads like crazy depending on what it's interacting with. The fire actually just looks amazing in this game. It's almost hypnotic watching it spread, especially when you find an entire pool of oil or like some other flammable liquid that'll just burn up in seconds. Playing with fire is just really fun in this game, even if you end up being dead half the time. Now down to number one, Teardown. Fire doesn't get much better than this. In Teardown, they drop you into a fully voxel world that's just fully destructible. How you go about breaking things is up to you. You know, you can smash walls with a sledgehammer or just ram a car into things, but the physics-based destruction is some of the most impressive stuff we've ever seen. But if you combine it with fire, then you got something really, really good. Fire spreads and destroys things in this game in a way that's really impressive because it's all mechanics. The simulation is so impressive that it can cause even the best computers out there to chug when the fires get really out of control. But it looks so cool that it's kind of hard to complain. Yeah, the graphics are very basic, but what's going on under the hood in this game is pretty next gen. Just look at how the flames spread and slowly cause the environment to fall apart. When it comes to destruction, no other game really does exactly what this one does. And even though it's still in early access, it's definitely worth checking out. Those are some games with cool fire for various reasons, but we got one extra one we wanted to mention, and it's called Icarus. What we've seen from the fire effects in this upcoming survival game blow us away. You know, the only reason this game isn't on the list is because it's not actually out yet. This game combines some pretty realistic graphics with some impressive procedural fire to make some of the most impressive fire effects we've seen, at least just looking from the beta videos. So that's already probably a promising start. We just wanted to put it out there for all the people who like a bit of fire in their games. Uh, this one might be worth keeping on your radar. But anyway, those are 10 plus games we wanted to highlight with cool fire and weird, crazy effects. We want to hear from you guys in the comments. What game has the best fire to you personally? Do you have a story in a game where you started a fire and it screwed you over or worked to your advantage? We'd love to hear any weird examples you got. If you had a good time with us though, clicking the like button really helps us out. We would very much appreciate that. And if you're new, consider subscribing, maybe hitting that notification bell because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.